Now, just before the knockdown in round two, Ryan Garcia was leaning forwards behind that high guard before throwing a left hook that Tank Davis was able to slip under. And then afterwards, you can see Garcia frame with both of his gloves on the back of Tank's head. This forces Davis's head downwards and keeps him in a fixed position, which will make it easier for Ryan to set up follow-up shots. And afterwards, Garcia looks to land a right hook and a left hook simultaneously to the head of Davis, but misses. And this gave Javon to Davis a rough indicator of what to expect if he found himself in a similar position later on. And Ryan misses on this occasion, but a few seconds later you can see that Ryan Garcia throws a left hook that Tank Davis is able to slip under, but look at his inside foot position. Garcia stepped on the inside of Tank Davis's lead leg, and that meant that Davis had an advantage from that angle position-wise. As that lead leg of Tank Davis now acts as a wall if Ryan Garcia wants to land a left hand again. But you can already see that Ryan Garcia is fully extended and his lead leg then puts him right in line for Davis's left hand and Davis follows up with a left cross that drops Ryan Garcia in the second round. And this aerial view is much better illustration of what I'm saying about that lead foot. By stepping on the inside, Tank's lead leg now acts as a wall and after missing, Ryan now finds himself overextended with that lead hand low and that sets him up right in line for the left hand of Davis which follows after. And bear in mind, everything you've just seen happened within a 10 second window in that second round. And then if we look at the final knockout sequence, you'll notice a parallel in that Ryan Garcia misses with the left hook and immediately after looks to frame with both of his gloves on the back of Javonta Davis's neck, although Davis has already had a sample of what he's working with when Ryan does this, as he found himself in an identical position in that second round just a few moments before he knocked down Ryan Garcia with that headshot. And so Davis anticipates the same combination to follow of a right hook and a left hook to the head, but in advance, it's also worth monitoring his back lift compared to Ryan Garcia's as the two go to exchange. So as Ryan Garcia's relieving pressure on that head to try and set up his own shot, you can see that Javonta Davis is already at the full extension of his back lift for firing a shot of his own. And this gives him first mover advantage. So by the time Ryan's got his back lift ready and coiled to throw his own right hand, Javonta Davis's left hand is already on the way and it will land on the top target quicker as it's already traveling and also it's a straight punch whereas Ryan Garcia's loops more around the side and takes longer to travel but because Javonta's was already recoiled by the time Ryan was getting his back lift under him that's why his lands quicker as Ryan Garcia also lands a right hook to tank but he's already landed his shot first and it has more momentum and from this aerial view you'll also notice that as Ryan Garcia relieves that pressure on Davis's head Davis has already landed his left foot and plunged it. Whereas in the case of Ryan Garcia, he's second to plant his foot and Javonta Davis has first mover advantage because of that. As Davis has his weight under him by planting that rear foot where he can push off and transfer the energy through the punch. As that kinetic energy chain passes through and that enables him to land that body shot to Ryan Garcia that ultimately forces him to take a knee. And Garcia doesn't beat the count in time and Javonta Davis wins via stoppage to the body but it's well worth considering that just before before that knockdown in the second round, only seconds before, that was when Davis made his read of what to do in that situation if it arose again. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at Elusive YouTube on Twitter. If you guys want to see daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those to Instagram every day, and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.